All sorts of legends about this building. What's the legend of this building? You aren't a co-ed on campus until you've been kissed at midnight in this building. Ooh! <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Create, Concentrate, Collaborate by Artisan Alley. This footage is recorded back in 2021, and as you can see, this is an attempt to find the perfect angle. The person you see here is a talented yet humble man and a wonderful conversationalist. He will listen to you attentively. Always a great time catching up with him. Well, today you will hear stories from the man himself. So Mark is an artist. He's been uh, painting since how long? I don't know. Ever since I was old enough to hold a crayon. That, 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 I guess with in working at the media and, and right now is just since 1980 is when I started doing the pen and ink. So. Okay. He does a lot of different things because I'm looking at his paintings right now. I see like his latest um, architectural. Do you call it architectural? It's, yeah, probably like yeah. architectural renderings or yeah, probably yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. He draws buildings around Bloomington, mm -hmm. and that's why I want to bring yeah. him in because you can see there, those are his work. That one on the left is actually the first one he made that yeah. is in the style. And he draws a lot of stuff that's pretty historical, so this would be an interesting segment for you to just see what Bloomington was like <laughs> in the eyes of Mark Riggins. <laughs> okay, well there we go. Well, and a little bit about me too, so because I'm I'm a resident, a uh, long time resident of Bloomington. We moved, my parents moved here when I was one year old, seen a lot of changes. Yeah, ever since I can remember, there's always been a strong arts influence in the community. You got the IU Art Museum, which is amazing. If you haven't gone to the IU Art Museum and checked it out, you need to. Are you talking about Eskenazi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's the name of it now. Let's see, I'm old school. Following his old school ways, we took a relaxing walk and ended up at the gate to Indiana University. He wanted to show me a building that he drew back in the 80s. It was the iconic place for students to gather around and took their graduation pictures. That's only a small part of the story. There's actually a lot more. Okay, so you said that the clock tower burned? Yeah, this is a kind of the angle that I did, took the picture of. But when I drew it back in 1980, uh -huh. this it was before the clock tower burned and so this is totally reconstructed the top the roof was all burnt out and everything oh wow else. So they built, rebuilt that all it's it looks pretty close to what it is in the picture that i had but first one i did we showed that earlier was the student building which was the iconic building back in the time they don't change the structure at all on no, the roofs when they no, do the renovation. Was, this, was, this was iconic. This was the iconic place on campus when I drew it. This is what everybody got their picture for at graduation or when they came. Ah, uh, yeah, instead okay. Of it in front of instead of the gate. gate. Uh huh. And that student building you can see, that was before it had it bricked off. We people just drove back by the student building back then, so. Back in 1980, that's the way it was. This is the first one I did, and I just did it kind of freehand. There's some rules that I now would do better with perspective and things like that. But it was a good start, and it got me a lot of attention because as soon as I did it, a lot of people were interested in, in having me do other things for them, and mm. it just kind of picked off. I think they say that the with artwork, all that stuff that yeah, I did yeah, growing yeah. up, you do it yourself, and then you do it for family. And then you do it for friends, and then it, and hopefully, if you're lucky enough, it goes to all over the place. So now I'm, I'm at the point where it's going all over the place. Yeah. So I take these prints, these uh, pen and ink sketches, and I make note cards, and those note cards get, get shipped all over the world. Mm -hmm. And to have people, students in town, they're saying, this one's going to Russia, this one's going to Yeah, Canada, and this so it's going, like and all these going international, saying, yeah. And they go, wow, my stuff is going to be seen all over, not just in Bloomington, but yeah. to have it, have it do that. It's, uh, it's just so cool. What was 
is the Bloomington art community like when you were starting out? Mm -hmm. Well, it's it's starting out when I was young. It's it's I don't know that the culture is different with guys, art and music and things like that. It seemed to me to always be sports. Yeah. And I played sports and everything else, but it was like there was not really encouraging to do the other things oh, okay. as much as much as there was that. That was the biggest focus. So, but when I wasn't playing sports, I'd always be drawing. But as far as the community, it's been great. There's always something going on. They had these recreational facilities where they had crafty things you could do in the yeah. summers and and when. I was going to speak to it a little bit, but growing up in Bloomington, my grandmother lived in town, mm -hmm. and she was uh, lived on Dunn Street, right across from where the Poplars, do they still call it the Poplars? But she lived right across the street in the house she lived in. She's a re long distance re relative of Hoagie Carmichael, and it used to be Hoagie Carmichael's house, the house oh. she lived in, which is because she'd play piano and play Hoagie Carmichael stuff and everything mm -hmm. else. And, and She was an oil painter, too, and it shows... Uh, that was her little work area when she was doing oil painting and so I'd sit down beside her when she was doing her oil painting and I had my crayons and I'd do my crayon creations sitting next <laughs> to her and she was my hero because she did shows around town and gave lectures and everything else because her big thing also was capturing um, places that were important to people that brought out emotions in them where they you know maybe the houses they grew up or family pictures she did some family pictures of groups of people and, and things like that we mm -hmm. took them back in time yeah no it's the, the population was a lot less back then yeah, yeah. But these, there are a lot of like this is 60s and 70s, there are a lot of head shops down the thing with all the psychedelic posters. Yeah, and, and oh I always God. remember that and then the, the crazy clothes, the bell bottoms and all that other <laughs> stuff. <laughs> were you also a bell bottom wearing? Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Had the bell bottoms and the long pointy shirts. You know? <laughs> oh yeah. Colorful prints and stuff. Uh -huh. Awesome. Yeah, those are the different times. But, yeah. but anyway, that's, this is my grandma's main house. Yeah, I remember spending most time here. I don't know, there, there always just seemed something artsy to do, so I was always into it. And when I started doing these pen and inks and everything else, I just opened a whole avenue for me to look at different opportunities to be able to show my work, you know, having my art shown in, in, in places. Yeah. Right now they're in Bloomington Bagel and Avery's Pizza and, and places like that show my work. And my favorite food places too, it was it's nice having that happen. And then. Festivals didn't start until later, but I, at least I wasn't aware of them, but now I'm, I'm well aware of them and do a lot of them around the area. I, I love doing the outdoor shows. Mark is showing me the details of this building because Maybe next. something that, yeah, something that he's going to draw in the future. Don't take this idea, whoever watching this. It's Mark's idea, okay? <laughs> His distinct pen and ink style of architectural rendering was not the only method that he did. As any other artists out there, Mark experimented with a lot of different styles. I'll start out from the beginning. My mom was so good about saving things, and here's something I did when I was in first grade so it's pretty you know advanced for a first grader <laughs> but that's where I started out I just want to show that as a basis especially for the people who are just starting out there's you're not good there. immediately no yeah yeah there you much like that but yeah there's one of the I think that's one of the ships that came to America the one was doing uh, some historical story with the pictures so I used to do that but then then I got into the I think that was I did this in junior high. This is just the cover to my typing paper folder. So <laughs> I love that. Wait, what year is this? Oh, I don't know. It's probably in the '60s. Yeah, that explains the colors because I'm like, it's very funky, you know. Like, yeah, I think kind of not necessarily Peter Max, but kind of Peter Max <laughs> influence. But you know, it's like yeah. And then then you got into the things that obviously are the abstract stuff you said but kind of it still has some form like i can see faces and then i got the peace symbol in the middle of some craziness so <laughs> then you got the peace symbol with all the people flashing the peace sign 
the Vikings and the Cowboys, so I was a sports fan. Growing up, like I say, the biggest thing, you know, I'd always play different type of sports. I have no idea who this is, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it was pretty cool because it just did with a felt tip pen, so. And here's another one of the, like, the flowing. Mark Reagan's 1968. Yeah, 68, late in the 60s. Then I got into some more color things, and these are not true abstracts because they have realistic images in there. Just random things. Aww. <laughs> got the IU in the middle of it, but I like the like the arrows going in and out of the tunnel. Yeah, too. there's like a tunnel. And it's and got then... the arrows going both directions. Yeah, there's an in. It's got some animal in the in, or insect in the inside of that one. So, but those are kind of the colorful. And I'm sure those are all like 60s time frame that I did that, so I would have been 14, 15 years old when I was doing those. And then this was probably, yeah, would have been like 18 or 19 when I did that. It was just pen, a pencil mm -hmm. sketch of my, my girlfriend, who is now my wife. <laughs> I like this. I never finished this. I was going to put a face in there, but I just put the hair. <laughs> oh, that's a hair. Okay. This is kind of the pen influence, so I'm, I'm doing the pen again on that one, so... Okay, the next one was requested. This is the old Bloomington High School. You can see it's a beautiful brick building that was in existence. I forget it's, but that, how old that building was. But um, in 1969, that burned down. One of the classes wanted for their college reunion for me to draw this, mm -hmm. maybe to use for a fundraiser for their class. So I drew this. You can see, I, what I do is I draw everything in pencil first and get it close, and then I make sure that I go off the really off the table and get my perspective points but the perspective on this one was crazy because I maintained those bricks this is a really challenging one but yeah, all those I'm bricks. looking at the details and I'm like wow that takes a lot of work how long did this take you I don't know usually they take about 40 hours and this one wasn't as bad as some and so there's some that have taken longer than that this one where the old high school sat was at Seminary Square, where the old where the Kroger is now. So that was where this building was located. So and I can remember when I was in junior high watching the smoke. I don't know. It was it, it was a mess after the burned out. The old Bloomington High School. One of the first things that people once they knew I was doing these kind of things. Like, uh, you gotta do, you gotta draw this, and this is pretty much the angle that I've drawn it. Yeah, there's certain buildings that I knew I had to do, and this was one of them. And as soon as I did it, it was my parents had the original, but my, but the prints have gone all over the place. And there's, I think, one of the congressmen, I think it's Hamilton, he had it in his office, and then Judge Talaferro, mm -hmm. when she retired, she got it in her office. So was the building ever been renovated since you've been oh. around? The inside, have you been on the inside? No. The inside is crazy. <laughs> if, yeah. you, if you walk on the inside, the center part is all stained glass on the inside. What? Yes, and it is just, it's a work of art in itself. Because I guess during the Depression, if they had fancy stuff like that in buildings, they blocked it all off. But I forget, it was probably in the 70s or 80s, they opened it up to let everybody see all that stained glass. And, oh, oh, there you go. That there's a reference photo. Yeah, so I do have the reference photo on with this, and so it shows what I use. I love that archway going in, back into where the back chapel is, too. It was a really pretty shot before I drew it in black and white. <laughs> oh, come on. You made it great, <laughs> too, Mark. There was one show I was doing in Spencer, and I set up, and it was an outdoor show, and a guy had his lawn chair, and he says, Can I... Can I just set my lawn chair in the middle and just absorb this? <laughs> he just sat there for a long time, just looking around, just That's soaking so cool. in. There. Yeah, and this isn't in Bloomington. But I just have to share it because this is the hardest one I ever did. But yeah, one... we were talking about that earlier <laughs> because Mark was explaining to me about <laughs> making reflections in waters, <laughs> and then he showed me this, and my heart just kind of like. <laughs> Ah, that is some insane detail to put in. <laughs> this one was so hard. This is the longest anyone ever take, took me. It took about twice as long. So, you know, usually yeah. it took about 40 hours. This one took 80 hours. So much concentration because there was nothing regular. You couldn't get any straight perspective lines on it. You just had to draw it and piece it out. 
from what you're working for and, and I had to go down in person on this too because and it's down New Harmony's like two hours away mm -hmm. and I took this I took a, a picture of this is normally not that much water usually this is when it's flooded it's a beautiful shot and I, I went ahead and took it but I couldn't get a lot of the details so I had to go down and do a lot of in-person work somebody put that on a puzzle site and it's it's something like a three or four hundred piece puzzle too oh, so wow. <laughs> and then for all the sports fans these are both different on the football and in the back and in the front of the assembly hall is different. I've got, see, I've, I've gotten old enough that I'm drawing things that are historical. The technical side of what I could do, I used Ooh. to work, I used to work for the company that made the brakes for this. Oh, okay. And so I wanted to put something up in my office. This truck holds about 50 tons worth of stuff and this is, it's huge. You can walk standing up underneath this truck. It's so big. Mm -hmm. Doing these custom um, uh, commission pieces. There was one person that approached me, their son had a fishing boat charter okay. down in Florida. And so they sent me a picture of his boat and it was up on the wheels. But they said, you know, here's the boat, we'd like you to do the boat, but we'd like it in the water and we'd like it down in Florida. Oh, it had to be something that would look like inland lakes in Florida. So you had to, I had found some scenes and then I did this whole conglomeration to do that and, and it was the same thing when, when they gave it to him. It was a present from his mother-in-law, but when she gave it to him, he cried. And then when they had one of the storms down there, like the hurricanes and stuff, yeah. when they had to evacuate, the first thing he grabbed was the pictures. So it's nice. It means you, that much. Yes, yeah, yeah, you can do that and you make it that special, you know. You got to listen to what people want and be able to really hit the point, include that all, so they'll be satisfied with your work. I was getting my shot, my second shot for COVID, and the woman next to me, and, you know, we were talking about lamenting, getting back to the things. I said, yeah, I'm an artist. She said, what do you do? And I said, I, don't know. I do the pen and ink things. And she, <laughs> and, she was, <laughs> and, she, and she went crazy, I'm such a fan. And she said, I, I get your cards all the time. I'm out, I need to get some more. But it was just, and she said, I'm so glad that I got to spend time with you. <laughs> and that's so cool to be able to have people recognize your work. What I do is important. <laughs> and what's wild about artwork too, is you're capturing either your thoughts, something that's just only in your mind, like my doodles and stuff like that, that's no place else. But also, if you're doing something realistic, you're catch capturing that moment in time. How many moments are there in a life? And these unique, <laughs> unique visual moments yeah. are constantly going on. It just blows me away because I'm just capturing one little moment. I always try to be in the moment, trying to appreciate where I am and just look for all the little miracles. You, I just walk, because I walk around a lot, and then I'll just see something that's like looking at the sunset after a oh. walk. You know what I oh, mean? Yeah. Clouds. Yeah, just looking Every day at are clouds. Cl clouds are crazy. The mountains. You take these pictures. Okay, they're okay. Yeah. But you're there. It is just so. The feeling of being there. Is so so unbelievably. Yeah. Ma you know, majestic. I guess that you can't capture that ma majesty. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. Getting back to the little things too. I'm always, and I tell people about this, and it's the silliest thing, but I, I'm fascinated by dandelions. They're completely symmetrical. They're perfect. They're a perfect circle, perfect ball, every one of them. And a lot of it, most of it is, ed if not all of it, is edible too. And that's what I've learned too. Like, you know, I spent most of my career in business and, you know, there was an agenda and a schedule all the time you had yeah. to adhere to. So there was always something. I always had a time schedule to worry about, but now I'm now I'm retired and doing artwork is my major thing to make money but you know I, it, there's no agenda to that other yeah. than what I create for myself and then plus you know the daily they have very I'm, my days are pretty unstructured which I know drives a lot of people crazy not having any structure in their <laughs> days but to me it's so but you can have an unencumbered conversation I know it's that's the biggest thing about retirement unencumbered Un conversation unencumbered, yeah. <laughs> I bet Mm -hmm. I think a lot of kids nowadays don't want to feel, not not want to feel what you feel, but they don't want to feel that you, they've been restricted to this job for like this long of years mm -hmm. and then to only feel free after retirement. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's kind of yeah. like the changes that they're doing now. And that's, and that's good because it was, when I was working my first, my big major job when I worked at Carlisle, it was like, 
you know, 60, 80 hours a week. And it was like, That's yeah. a lot of hours. Yeah, and it was pretty much expected, I think. You know, you just did whatever you had to do to, to get the job done. And you, it comes at a cost, you know. It just, yeah. it, it wears you out. And they, do, they treated me well, even though the hours were excessive. But mm -hmm. I had a lot of varied experiences. It's, I, I always, I love having conversations and finding out Everybody has their stories. You know, I think Bloomington's a lot more tolerant of people being conversations. Oh yeah. <laughs> Bloomington's not a bad place. And I and I had traveled quite a bit when I was mm -hmm. with Carlisle and, and went to different areas and I'd see what other towns are and, and the amenities and the you know, the cool things that they that Bloomington has, all the restaurants and the, the culture too and then yeah. just I don't know, the atmosphere. There's so much going on and the cost of living is a lot more reasonable if you oh, were in, yeah. you were in California on the east coast. You know, I kind of fell in love with the place and I'm happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm happy staying here and visiting other places. <laughs> Do you have any message to like the younger generation artists? You know, be yourself. And that's that's from everything. You gotta discover what you're good at as far as if you're an artist you just got to experiment until somebody just something just clicked and that's what happened to me with my pen and ink it was just like all of a sudden I did that first one and I thought man this the mechanics of this are just so natural and it and I don't do it the same way every time so do you have a website or a social yeah. media you want to promote yeah mark Riggins art .com. .com. Yeah, markriggensart.com. So that's my that's my website. It's got a lot of this stuff on it. You can check it out. I'm pretty low key with my art. I don't want to be so busy I was when I was working. Yeah. I like my unencumbered time, so I'm I'm not that aggressive about trying to find more work. But I'd love to do stuff for you if you have a cool project. For me. Oh yeah, one last story though. I gotta tell you. Oh yeah, something. sure, definitely. But you know, you you dream of being an artist all your life. There was a couple that had commissioned me to do their house but they had in the place of their property they do maple syrup artists so anyway I was sitting out there and it was an autumn day and I had my sweatshirt on and I had my earbuds on I was listening to my music sitting there beautiful fall not cold day just comfortable I was sitting there drawing listening to my favorite music and their dog came up and their dog was just sitting by me and, I, and he wanted to be petted and he was just hanging out. And so he hung out with me all afternoon. And Aww. I said, I said, I'm getting paid for this. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is my heaven, you know, it's like my, my goal, you know, would be uh, being a known artist and being able to create something. That was my day, my perfect day. <laughs> That sounds like a perfect day. I mean, a dog just chose to sit beside you. That's like, yeah. you're the chosen one. Yeah, yeah. Hang out with me, you know. That's so cool. No, we're wrapping it up, actually. Yeah. I was going to say, i got to get going. Oh. But I was going to come in here and bug you. Yeah. 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 Oh, you, you want to show it? that? Yeah. It's so pretty, oh, you put right? It in the video? Yeah. <laughs> Adam is here just to show Mark what he did. Look at that building. Isn't that familiar? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did the building. It yeah, it used to be across the street. Now I've done this one, so I'm doing the whole neighborhood. Spot on, though. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. It's got all the little things that we're doing in here. It's great. Yeah, I tried to get the icons small enough on those icons. Thank you, Mark, for yeah. being here. Well, thank you so much for allowing me to talk. This is great fun, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I could I could talk with you for hours on all this stuff because I know you're into art and the This is what we do. This is how yeah. this is why we do it. For upcoming events, opportunities, and more info, give us a call at 812-370-0278 or visit our website at artisanally.com.